It's my great pleasure to introduce our next guest, who's in the studio with me, Chuck Mayfield. Chuck, welcome to the show. Thanks, Alex. Uh, we met, um, oh, I'd say, uh, nearly a year ago at the Melbourne Art Fair uh, when I was giving a talk on street art. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've been working uh, um, as an artist for some time now. Um, yeah, I've been doing art for as long as I can remember, really, uh, with my family, both both my parents being artists and uh, all my extended family too, uh, musicians or dancers or something like that. Um, and that's um, yeah. uh, brought you to today, which um, you've got an exhibition, Visions of Dreamland, mm-hmm. which is an exhibition that you've done in conjunction with your partner, Julia Palazzo. Yes. And it's on at the Hogan Gallery, opening on the 14th of May, mm-hmm. um, coming up this, this week, isn't it? Yep, this Thursday. Uh, tell us about the show. Tell us about the works. Um, so it's about dreams. That's the, the basic theme. And it's about all types of dreams, um, specifically mine and Julia's. So we've got uh, some of the works are uh, illustrations, which are literally of images and experiences that we've had in our sleeping dreams. Some images are about, um, yeah, some of the works are about the dreams that we have for our life, you know, the things you dream of doing and uh, maybe daydreams or things that you've dreamt about. So it's, it's about um, expressing the inner world to other people you know so you have these inner experiences you go to sleep and you wake up and you just have this big story and you might tell someone oh i just had this dream i was in a forest with a wolf or something but and you know they might get it they might not but this is actually to you know you can illustrate that and and literally bring these things out of you and um yeah not just for sleeping dreams but all dreams all dreams and how do you go about that do you remember if in the particular instance of the the dreams you have while you're asleep do you wake up and then start sketching or drawing um no actually for myself no for both of us actually we we haven't really done it that way we've for me i've sort of chosen some significant dreams that i've had throughout my life so they're mostly from years ago actually there's certain ones that really really stuck with me like i've had a few dreams that i woke up from and it was it's they have this really significant feeling and i find it interesting that with dreams um even if they feel incredibly significant or incredibly powerful we don't actually spend very long dwelling on it you know you don't really think that much about it you know you think about it for a little bit and then you go back to your day and back to your life and you don't really revisit it how important do you think that those dreams are do they have an effect on you personally um well i like to be open-minded about things in a sense of i don't like to sort of i don't i don't subscribe to the idea that you know you can look up a, a dream dictionary and say that that's a symbol for that thing or you know, if there's any way of um, decoding dreams, I like to think of it as everything in it is a symbol of yourself. And, you know, maybe there's sort of some co- unconscious Freudian sort of way to decode it or something like that. But aside from that, um, I'm also open to the idea that maybe they're not anything, you know. So sure. I, I just find them very interesting. Some of the things that ha- I'm sure everyone knows that you can have some very um, profound experiences well, I dreams. think uh, it was Nietzsche who said that dreams are either fears or wishes or desires. Mm. So what are the recurring dreams that you have um, that have come back over these years? Um, one of them is fish. I have a lot of dreams about fish. Uh, it's actually something that Julia and I have bonded over because she's we both have a very strong connection to fish and water. But um, throughout my life, since I was a child, and I still have them now, I'll have these dreams where I'm looking at water. Uh, there'll be a pond or something, and it'll just be sort of, dark water and and kind of stagnant looking and then I'll notice a couple of tiny fish and then I realize there's a bigger one underneath it and a slightly bigger one and eventually you know it's just completely full of fish and they're all swimming around and they're all they're really magnificent beautiful creatures they're beautiful dreams so they're not nightmares at all they're enjoyable dreams no I mean obviously I have nightmares too (laughs) we won't (laughs) go into them I I won't put that on you now no no I haven't really put them in the show either though no that's good so it's not a dark show no no it's not dark at all with with the uh, the dreams of the fishes and this recurring uh, fish imagery in your dreams Mm -hmm. are there fish in the show yeah definitely yeah yeah Um, yeah. and Julia's uh, her her father um, is a diver a scuba diver she goes diving a lot he runs a marine conservation group called divers for sharks so they're very much connected to the ocean and she dreams a lot about fish and yeah there's what's divers for sharks is that for preservation of shark yeah yeah yeah, it's a conservation um of of the shark population of the world um he's from brazil julia's from brazil and yeah that's that their angle is basically they're trying to 
promote the idea and make people understand that the diving industry will suffer if there are no sharks and that there's probably more money in keeping sharks alive than killing them. I mean, the the drive behind it is the fact that it's, um, you know, it's a horrendous thing that sharks are being finned and killed and, you know, what's going on in the oceans is terrible. Uh, I but, can't um, believe the Australian government, in fact, have joined on, on board as for the protections of humans. Mm. Uh, get out of the water if you don't want to be eaten by a shark. That's my theory. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's yeah. a risk you take. It's their place, so yeah. Yeah. Um, are they based in Melbourne, that particular... Uh, no, they're based in Brazil, actually. Based in Brazil, yeah. yeah. But they're they're worldwide, so... They're worldwide. Yeah. We're, we like to say we're their Australian office. Yeah. So it's really interesting. You know, um, I've met a couple of people, or couples who paint with their partners, and it must be an interesting dynamic. Mm-hmm. How does that relationship work? Um, well, well, well uh, all the time? <laughs> um, it's. I think it's like anything in life, you know, it has ups and downs. Um, yeah, so we we run a business together doing commercial art and we live together and um we're following our career path you know uh, transitioning from commercial and and private art to galleries so we have a lot that we manage together um and you know i'd be lying if i said there weren't challenges in that but also we are very close and we understand each other very well so we we get through all those things and it actually kind of makes it stronger too you know we because we move through life together and face challenges together, and yeah, yeah, I think it, I think so it's, it's fantastic. Good. Yeah, well, some of the happier times I've had with my partner Claire have been when we've been working on the house or doing chores together or doing something together, which is productive. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and and when you've um, when you have a, a problem or challenges in life and you overcome them, you, you tend to grow closer. So that's true. Yeah, and with the actual works that you're doing, because your main business and how you earn an income is painting murals for people. Yeah, and painting that's right. uh, So in interiors and outdoors and houses, commercial projects, how does it work? Um, yeah, we mostly do um, private residence and commercial. So we do shops and bars and cafes and we'll do people's homes. And we also do um, some custom canvases for people too. So probably about 10% custom canvas and uh, 90% for the rest, about half-half for the and other two. is it um, heavily um, dictated by the clients to what to paint, or is there a bit of freedom there? It's it's a totally mixed bag. Some people call you up and they want exactly, they, they want an image that, that's just, I want you to paint this on my wall. And other people say, oh, we want some graffiti, street art-looking things. So, um, I mean, we we don't often get requested just, oh, just do whatever you want, or do, yeah, do something, or, or they... We don't. We don't. We feel we don't have enough of our own work out there yet for people to to look at and say, you know, we want that particular style, and that's the direction we're headed in now. Is we want to do more of our own work, so that people actually have an example of it and they can see it and say, oh, I, you know, I like your style and I want you to do that. There must in, be a lot of in freedom in that, being able to paint what you want. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the goal, isn't it? That's a goal for for us, and I believe it's if you're if you're creative, if you're truly an artist, then that's the life you want to live is just to explore creatively through your work so this is a, a big exhibition for you because as you said it's your first solo exhibition of works that you've created with your partner mm-hmm. it's displayed in a gallery um so uh what's the main theme and focus of the show apart from the dreams the actual imagery itself um, the imagery uh do you mean what's in the paintings yeah or? um so i've got uh for my I, i've sort of I've got half half really, so half the paintings are from sleeping dreams, and half of them are from from sort of waking dreams. So there's one piece which is um, th- there's one which is about the fact that when I was a teenager and in my early twenties, I spent a lot of time on trains, um, just getting back and forth all over the city, and I used to write graffiti, and um, yeah, I just used to. I actually used to, at night time, because you can't see the graffiti out the window, I would either read or I'd sit there and meditate, and I used to dream about graffiti and traveling the world, you know, which is... <laughs> it's a good dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so so that that's one of them, you know, it's, it's an illustration of, of that, like sort of my expression of that. Um, yeah, Julia's got some which have a lot of ocean in them, because she's, she dreams a lot about the ocean and being in the ocean and that sort of thing. So... Um, yeah, they're kind of hard to explain. I mean, there's there's one if, if to explain one literally, I guess there's one where I had a dream that I was uh, walking down a main road where some shops were, sort of in a, in an 
inner city suburb type area and um there was one particular shop and and it was da- it was dawn and there was all the shops were closed and all the lights were off and everything but there was one shop that was way bigger than the others and it was this giant fish tank it was about three stories high just this tall thin building and i went up and put my face on the glass and there was this giant uh blue serpent in it swimming really slowly and this is a dream i had probably about eight years ago now and um it's it's always i've just always remembered it It was really really this powerful feeling and uh this this sort of serpent dragon thing swam down to the bottom of the tank and just swam past me and it's its head was about the size of my body just about and um its head looked like a big skull but it was alive and and um it we we made eye contact and had sort of this really there was this moment of connection and so it's it's a painting of that you mentioned to me before we went on air about some of the sculptural works in the show too. Can you tell us about mm-hmm. those? Yeah, we wanted to do a bit more than just have some paintings on the wall for people to just sort of walk in and walk back out. So um, we wanted to sort of create a bit more of an environment, a bit of an experience. And um, so we've split the gallery in half and Julia's got a bunch of furniture and she's painted it and she's got some objects and um, decorated them and sort of put her own stylization on them. And so she's decorating hers like a room that the room that she wants to express and um, I'm doing a couple of pieces which are kind of sculptural furniture I guess yeah it's like a sculpture that you can sit on is the main piece that I'm working on fantastic at the exhibition we are out of time believe it or not it goes quickly doesn't it Chuck <laughs> yeah it does yeah. Um, visions of dreamland an exhibition by Chuck Mayfield who's with me today and Julia Palazzo his partner it's on from the 13th to the 27th of May opening night on the 14th of may if you want to go and uh, it's at hogan gallery 310 smith street collingwood but if you want to go and see uh chuck's website it's mayfieldpalace.com and you're also on facebook yep yeah, yep yeah. it's all it's uh chuck mayfield and mayfield palace so yeah julia's last name's palazzo and that means palace in italian so that's why we're mayfield palace oh mayfield palace i like it yeah, yeah. and there's not many there can't be too many two chuck mayfields out there so just google that and you'll come up surely yeah Yeah, absolutely.